Morning, everyone. I've got a few verses I want to share with everyone this morning to encourage you to pray. Because I know myself, I have sometimes thought, what's the point of praying? It doesn't do any good. My prayers don't amount to anything. They don't accomplish anything. Well, i got news for you. They do much more than you think. And so I want to encourage you to pray by sharing with you some verses out of the book of Revelation that may surprise you. Maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't, but I'm just offering it right here as an encouragement to pray. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. How big were those golden bowls of incense? I don't know, but they contain the prayers of the saints. God is watching. God is listening. He's answering. He's hearing. He's intimate with the upright. Why would he not? Why would your prayer not be effectual? If you're in sin, or if you just don't care, then no, your prayers won't. They'll hit the ceiling and bounce back. But if you have a relationship with Christ, if you really are seeking Him, and if you're sincere, then everything you say and do has a consequence. Every prayer you pray has a consequence. And then in Revelation chapter 8, verses 3 through 6, Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, <clears throat> that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. Wow! And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And I'll let you read the rest of the chapter to find out what happened on the earth after those prayers of the saints with the fire from the altar were thrown down to the earth. Anyway, I just want to encourage people not to give up praying. There's a lot of bad things happening in the world right now. And it's all part of God's plan to bring about the apocalypse, the end time. And um, I want to read Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And there was given him a great sword. In my opinion, this is just me, Bob, talking, that the rise of Islam in the 7th century AD took peace from the earth. All of Africa was Christian, but then when Muhammad came along, they slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Africans and took over uh, Christian Africa and made it Muslim. Now, there's still a lot of Christians in Africa, don't get me wrong. But millions and millions of people, since Muhammad had his religion, have died from Islam. And many, many millions more have died because of communism coming at the uh, beginning of the last century. So not very long ago, more peace was taken from the earth. In my opinion, Islam... And communism are two peas in a pod, and they were created to take peace from the earth. Okay, so our position as Christians is to pray for those who hate us, pray for those who despitefully use us, do good to them, pray for pray for them, pray for our the people, pray for the people who hate us, the people, the individuals. Imprecatory prayer. And if you know what that is, imprecatory prayer is basically calling down a curse on somebody. We don't want to do that because Jesus told us to leave behind a blessing. He said, bless those that curse you. So we're not going to curse anybody. But what we can do is pray against 
the institutions that are enslaving the people that do harm to us. Pray for the eradication and pray for the destruction of Islam. Pray for the eradication and the destruction of communism. Homosexuals, we love homosexuals, but we don't love what they do. It's an abomination. Pray against that spirit of homosexuality, not against the person themselves who is held captive to the spirit of homosexuality. Do you see what I mean? Okay, we can have the best of both worlds. We can pray a blessing upon those who hate us and be like God in every respect. And at the same time, we can pray for the destruction of every system of man, every Babylonian system of man that has enslaved people and made them do things that are horrible. Pray for the destruction of Babylon. Oh, wait a minute. That's in Revelation chapter 18. Ah, okay, so your prayers have a huge effect on what goes on. In the world, they have way more of an effect than you think they do. So let's get back on our knees. Let's get back in our prayer closet. Let's get back in that mode of seeking God and praying and watch Him answer our prayers. And trust me, you are going to be sorely disappointed if you think that you praying is going to help you escape persecution that's coming. You're going to be very disappointed. You may fall away from the faith. You're not going to escape anything. You're, whatever happens to the general populace is going to happen to you if you're alive to see it. So don't think because you're a Christian or because you have a close relationship with Christ that you're going to miss out on the suffering. No. In fact, you may suffer more. Peter, in chapter 4 of his epistle, said that those who have suffered have ceased from sin. And God is holy. Does he want you to cease from sin? Yes. Will it take suffering to make that happen? If that's what it takes. Because God loves us. He loves the world. God bless you.